Change of Perspective by A.B. England. I've got a weird feeling about that place, Isaac murmured eerily. Bixie glanced back at him over her shoulder, and his stomach did a little flip, seeing her wide, violet eyes watching him. It was weird being a bit shorter than her now when she'd fit in the palm of his hand with room to spare not an hour before. If it weren't for the residual pain of his bones bumping together as he was shrunk down, he wouldn't believe such a thing was possible, even after years in the fate realm. Eerily winced and looked back toward the rather impressive doors ahead. Isaac's gate faltered and a whole flock of butterflies started fluttering about in his stomach. Eerily kept walking and the leash he put on him as he was recovering from the reduction spell snapped taut. What's in there? he asked, swallowing past the lump that formed in his throat. The unfamiliar and unwelcome collar that come with the leash felt tighter in that moment and Isaac stepped back, tugging on the leash on reflex. Eerily turned, pulling on the leash as she did. I know you're scared, Isaac, but you have to stop, she said. The tone of her voice was weird, somewhere between a concerned friend and one someone might use with a spooked horse. She grasped the leash in her free hand, gripping it just enough to prevent Isaac from backing away as she walked forward. I'm sorry, but Owen wasn't wrong. If you're going to stay in a stricening, I'm going to have to get you the required vaccinations and papers, especially with an epidemic brewing. Confusion brought Isaac to a halt as he asked, What's a vaccination? Having gotten close enough, Eerily reached out toward Isaac's arm. It wasn't a quick movement, and just until now she hadn't given him any real reason not to trust her, humiliation aside. But nerves and confusion still had him flinching away from her touch. They're a kind of medicine used to prevent the contraction of disease, Eerily explained. Humans can't catch wing wither, Isaac argued. We don't have wings. That's not entirely true, Eerily answered with a shake of her head. The symptoms are different, of course, but a few cases of humans with the virus have been recorded. She scrunched up her forehead and bit her bottom lip. The expression was so human it looked odd, worn on the pixie's delicate features and powder blue complexion. There's speculation it's a human virus, and it wouldn't even exist in the Fey realm if it remained cut off from yours, she continued at a whisper. You've already been exposed. Can't you see this is vital not only for you to stay in a strickening, but for your continued health? Is that all? Isaac asked. He cast the doors at where he glanced before looking back to Eerily. Just go get this medicine, he grimaced inside. Get the papers naming me your pet, and then I'm good. Eerily nodded and gave him a pained looking smile. I know this is weird and humiliating for you, she muttered. I'm sorry about that, but there are strict rules regarding humans here, even those who've undergone the reduction spell, she grimaced. It's this, or you get dragged through those doors by enforcers. They'll take you far past the little clinic just on the other side, way back beyond the hospital wing to where humans are used for testing. A chill shuddered down Isaac's spine at the certainty in Eerily's voice. He'd take being reduced to a pet over a lab rat any day. She at least seemed to be among the friendliest of her kind he'd met. He sighed and moved forward just enough to let the leash he wore go slack. You're just trying to protect me? Eerily nodded. All right, then. Isaac tugged at his collar, trying to loosen it enough to at least be a bit more comfortable, before dropping his hands to his side. Lead the way. If you enjoyed today's story and would like to see some more stories or articles or find out about my books, you can find more information at abengland.com. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.